Bose has been a huge name in home audio for almost 60 years, beginning with the eccentric looking 2201s in 1964, and then moving on to the groovy 901 speakers from 68, which definitely gained a cult following for years to come. And Bose was introduced to me in the early 90s via the Acousta Mass system, which was a satellite speaker slash subwoofer combo that wasn't invented by them, but I feel like they are the ones who kind of brought it to the mainstream. But we can't really talk about Bose without mentioning the elephant in the room and that elephant is some people and 99.8 percent of audiophiles hate them i mean really hate them and i'm not going to go into too much detail on that um actually if you look up here just audio did a video just audio just did a video on that and um, they go into a lot more detail and can explain a lot more than i would actually be able to or could remember so I went to Goodwill and actually got a very good haul of a bunch of different stuff, which is actually going to be another video. Check out that. But um, in going back looking for something, a piece of uh, a puzzle that I was looking for, I went back and I'd actually found these speakers in a completely different section than where they normally are. Now, being a self-proclaimed audiophile snob that I am, I'm not really super big on bows. The bows that I know and grew up with is the bows that came out with the Acousta Mass system. They used to run like an infomercial on it. I can't really find any footage from that, but I did find this. Nu hebben we allebei onze zin. Het allerbeste geluid en ik heb weer alle ruimte. Wat een schatjes. Ze zijn nog kleiner dan een pak melk. En wat een formidabel geluid. Ongelooflijk. Het revolutionaire Acoustima systeem van Bose. Uw ogen geloven uw oren niet. And so now, I've heard stories of the 901s, I've heard good and bad stories of the 901s, but I remember being young, hearing stories about the 901s, and generally, people really loved them. And I had also heard about the 601s, which were pretty revolutionary. They had four tweeters up top, and I think a mid-range, and then drivers inside of the actual cabinet. Now, hearing about the 901s and the 601s and all that, I've only heard rumors about them. I've never actually heard them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give an honest opinion. This is as a music lover and as an audiophile. I claim to be an audiophile. We're going to hook it up to the Denon so we're not, you know, giving it any cheap shots. We're going to give it a good receiver. But before that, full disclosure, I did give a listen to these. And unfortunately, on both the left and right speaker, the tweeter was blown. Or so I thought. I did used to own an Acousta Mass, just the subwoofer, which I actually took the circuitry out of, and I noticed that they had four little light bulbs on there, and I thought they were fuses, or I acted as a fuse of some sort, and I didn't really, you know, know what was going on until later. I found that there actually are light bulbs inside of these speakers, which will blow in case if you overpower them, so you don't blow your tweeters. I've already repaired one, and it's a pretty cool repair, and I'll show you how to go ahead and repair it if, in case you do maybe find a pair of these like I did for $10 at Goodwill. But then once I properly repair both of them, I'm gonna go ahead and like I said, hook them up, and I'm gonna test them fully, and I'm gonna give a good, honest opinion and see what is so bad about Bose. Stay tuned. Okay, so this step is not necessary in this repair, but I figured I'd go ahead and replicate my first repair attempt. Um, this, as you can see, just kind of comes off. There's these little uh, nubbers there. They go into them holes. You can just kind of take something flat and pry those off. And uh, that contains the tweeter, a very weird eccentric tweeter. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and then give you guys a look at the inside. Assembled in Mexico. Let's see if I can get you in there. Yeah. Yeah. I can kind of see the crossover, see a couple coils back of the other speaker. Huh, pretty interesting. Well, I figured I'd just give you guys a look in there, show you the porting and all of that. Voila. Although I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of the uh, late 90s-esque plasticky kind of shoddiness of uh, this, I guess you would call it a tweeter enclosure. Uh, 
just seems like that would be a lot of uh, unwanted vibration. But anyways, let's go around to the back. This is the back. This is the rear firing woofer. So I noticed in the last time that I took this apart, uh, I'm actually going to take off the speaker terminals because it gives you a little bit more uh, leeway, more wiggle room when you take this off. For some reason, this driver has like not very much lead on the end of it. So it's kind of hard to uh, get in there and make the repair. What we're looking for is kind of right behind this driver on a the back of that divider panel kind of in the back there so really we want to get in through this woofer so i'm going to remove this and remove that and then i will get you back in there so you guys can see what's going on inside of a bose 601 series 4 speaker if you so choose okay so this one was no different this one might have a little bit less going on but i think i can get no i cannot oh yes i can if you look, that little huh, that little light bulb thing right there is what we're after. So I have to one-handedly reach in there to make the repair, which isn't too bad considering the type of light that I got. I will show you in a minute, and uh, it actually makes it pretty easy. There you can see another angle of the uh, components, which make up the crossover. And so what I did was I went down to my local auto parts store. I mean like real local. It's a very, very small old uh, auto parts store. And the lady behind the counter went back and got these for me. She dusted them off. And because uh, after I explained to her what I needed, she said, Oh, I think I have something back there. And this is what she came up with. Oh, okay. And yep. Pretty much just a 12 volt, uh, 21 CP, which is 21 candle power, uh, light bulb, little lamp. And it's cool because it's got these little, uh, kind of little hook deals on the end of the electrode and the anode. And, uh, or excuse me, the anode and the cathode. And it's pretty, makes it easy because I can just kind of snip the ones out of here and, uh, with the remaining lead, wrap it around here. And uh, makes a pretty good connection. There uh, shouldn't be too much vibration within there because I don't plan on really pushing these speakers too hard. But um, I don't know. I might actually put them downstairs if they sound pretty good. So uh, I don't know how I'm going to be able to record this while doing the uh, repair. So I think I'm just going to jump cut to the repair done and then explain what I did. Because, I mean, like I this... That's how much room I have to get my fat hand in there. All right, so here is the existing light bulb. You can kind of see the little filament falling around in there. That was definitely burnt out. And so there is our repair. I didn't solder anything, but uh, I think it'll be all right just for these testing purposes. But I did notice that this is a completely solderless design. Everything is just turned onto the leads. That's uh, kind of old school, and there's actually a little bit of a theory behind that, uh, not using solder and electron flow. If you want to look into that, that's interesting. But, uh, so yep, this is pretty much repaired. I'm going to go ahead and throw this all back together, and uh, we're going to hook them up on the Denon, and let's give these things a proper review. Okay, so straight into the studio, we are in the audio library. And uh, this one is on the rocks. This is without the subwoofer hooked up for the first run, and it's not going to be really too loud, so... Try the Spirit Riders.
since we hooked up the subwoofer, let's go ahead and listen to Jane Street again with the subwoofer. Okay, so I've been listening to them for about two hours now, and I definitely have to say they are way better than I expected they were going to sound, and I'm not just saying that. I don't know if that takes me out of that uh, category for audiophile, if the uh, audiophile gatekeepers want to come and get me now or whatever, but um, I mean, really, it's not anything that's like going to completely blow your socks off, but... All of the sound that came out of them was very enjoyable and full. The tweeters, I was wondering how they were going to kind of perform, because I have a certain type of tweeter that I like. I call it crispy, golden brown, <laughs> crunchy, not crunchy, very hard to explain, but I kind of like a little more of a refined, a little bit of a brighter tweeter, and I really like the tweeters on these, I'm not going to lie. The mids come through really well. There is a pretty good mid bass. Um, they don't really dig too low and also we have to bear in mind that I said that I was going to try to set up you know the sonics as well as I could in the acoustics and I mean I, there's really not much I can do so I have them placed about where I usually put my speakers and honestly I'm I really mean this they sound really good it's changed my mind about Bose to be honest with you not sponsored by them nothing like that um, I've always kind of hated on Bose a little bit but Honestly, the 601s, like I said, nothing to really blow your socks off, and I'm not sure what they uh, list for MSRP. You know, I don't know if maybe 1500 or whatever they, like, I don't know if it's worth that much. But um, between that and my Pioneers, I still like my Pioneers better, but um, they're pretty close. Honestly, they're pretty close. So if you do happen to find a set of these at a thrift shop or something like that, and you bring them home and you get a really good deal on them, and uh, you find out that the tweeter's not working on them, go ahead and just buy a light bulb and hook it up. It'll work for you. So if you enjoyed the content and you like more, go ahead and subscribe. Or just leave a like. You can comment down below. But that's it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, I think I'm going to listen to these for another couple hours. So uh, have a good one, guys. Thank you.